What's up guys, this is David from How To Ghost, and today I'm going to take you through the structure of a ghost theme. I'm just going to go over what all the different files do, what all the different folders do, just kind of give you a quick overview so if you plan on creating your own theme or just editing the theme you already have, you can kind of know where to go and how to structure everything. So I'm going to show you on the default Casper theme, which is what comes with every ghost blog standard, um, and it's kind of like the blog or the theme that most people use to create their themes off of. So to get started, the first thing you see is the assets folder. The assets folder is where you can put all of your CSS or your JavaScript, images, icons, kind of anything that you reference in your HTML that you want to house somewhere in the blog. So like, for example, you know, we house a lot of our logos and stuff in these. You can see they have their CSS in here. So when they reference it, they can just say, hey, the asset folder, go grab it here. Ghost has an asset helper that automatically links to this folder. So anything in here, you don't have to worry about relative links or you don't have to worry about hard links or anything like that, depending on what folder you're in inside your theme. You can just say, hey, go to the assets folder and grab this file. So this is kind of where, again, all the CSS, JavaScript, that kind of stuff goes. The partials folder is for different snippets of code that you use in multiple places. So for example, you can see they have the loop.hbs file. This file loops through all the different posts that they have and then spits out you know, it in a certain format. So you can see right here, it's saying, hey, grab the post titles and put a link to the blog post and you know, put this specific class on it. So this is something that's gonna be used in multiple places on their blog. It's gonna be used on their homepage, it's gonna be used on their tag page, other stuff like that. So rather than having this code in a bunch of different places inside the theme, they create a partial file and then they reference it from other files within their theme to kind of just put all the all the work into one place so you don't miss it somewhere else. Um, the author.hbs file, this is for specific author pages. So just like there's a tag page where if you tag a post with, you know, theme, then you can go and see a list of all the, the posts with the tag theme. You can do the same thing with an author. So you can go to author David, it will show all the posts by David. And so this is the file that styles that page that shows all the, all the posts by the specific author. So you can, that can look completely different than the actual home page. The default.hbs file is the file that is included everywhere, usually. So all the stuff like including your CSS or including your JavaScript or Google Analytics, things like that would all go in the default.hbs file because this is what's used universally throughout the whole theme. So you can see like they have their navigation here because the navigation is going to be the same everywhere. Their footers here, all their JavaScript is here because that's going to be because they want that on every page. So the index.hbs file, this is their home page. So the index.hbs is the first page you see when you go to the blog. It usually has a list of posts. It has, you know, all the information you could want. The only difference between index.hbs is there's actually another file called home.hbs that Casper does not use. And the difference between home.hbs and index.hbs is home.hbs is the actual home page only. So say for example, when you go to a blog and it has a large cover image that says, you know, whatever, welcome to our blog, and then it has all the blog posts below that. But then when they hit next page, you don't wanna show that same huge image again because they're already on your website. So on your home.hbs, you can set it up to show the big cover image, show all the posts, and then when they hit uh, next page to see more posts, it'll show the index.hbs. You don't need a home.hbs file, but you can have one. If you don't have one, then it'll just use the index.hbs. And so usually in most themes, the index.hbs is the home page. But if there is a home.hbs, then that is the very first page that, that you see. The package.json is a file that has the theme's information. So this really isn't used a whole lot yet. So right now, if you see, it just has the theme name and the theme version. But in the future, this is going to have like compatibility and more stuff like that. So it'll get more built out. Right now, really, the thing that's used is the name. So when you log into the blog, you can see the name and the version next to it, too. But it's not used a whole lot now. It will be in the future. Page.hbs is the style of the static pages that you have. 
So static page like the about us page or the contact us page. This is the style of all static pages. With page.hbs and a few other ones like author and tag, you are able to create a specific um, a specific style of a specific static page, if that makes sense. So over in like Ghost for Beginners, this is our theme. You can see we have a page.hps file, but we also have a page-ebook and a page-theming.hps. This is because our ebook page and our theming page that we have, we wanna have a completely different HTML structure than every other static page. So the ebook has to match the actual URL. So if you go to our website, it's ghostforbeginners.com slash ebook. And then, so Ghost picks up this specific format for that specific static page. And like I said, you can do the same thing with tag pages, uh, same thing with author pages to customize if you want a specific author to have a specific page or whatever. But the page.hbs file is for all static pages that, that don't have a specific one. Post.hbs is the style of the actual post itself. So all the written stuff, you know, if you want sidebars or whatever, all that goes in here. And then lastly, tag.hbs, like I said, the tag is for if you tag a post with, you know, theme or whatever, then this will be the, the style of the page that lists all the posts with that specific tag. And again, you can customize to have a specific tag look like a specific thing. So that's kind of a, just a quick overview of all the themes. Um, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, Casper is a great place to go look. Um, all the themes we created, we started on the Casper framework and then kind of stripped a bunch of stuff out, threw a bunch of new stuff in. And that's what a lot of people do. And that's really one of the best ways if you're trying to create a new theme. Don't start from complete scratch. Start with something that is already working and the structure is already there and just kind of like build on top of that with what you want to do. That's usually the best idea. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to subscribe, go ahead and uh, click on the, the subscribe button. We also have a Ghost for Beginners ebook that kind of goes over a lot of this stuff and a lot of other beginner stuff. We'll have a link for that down below. We also have a blog post on the, on the theme structure if you want to go read it. And there's also the official documentation of the structure too. So you can go through and read all about each one and get information on all sorts of stuff for your theming. So definitely feel free to check both of those out. I'll throw both of those links down below also. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.